Good afternoon, everyone. I'm, I'm honoured to follow Professor Friedman in uh, some more IETF-related uh, discussion. Um, so I'm going to just talk briefly about a, a, this is a presentation that I actually gave a, a few years ago now, um, and we've been happily carrying on uh, with this, these principles, and um, we've decided to document the process a bit better. So let me explain. Who knows what an internet exchange is? Most of you had this rammed down your throats and you're probably sick of internet exchanges and hearing about them. Well, it's a bunch of switches. It's really simple. I run an internet exchange in London, uh, which has been around about 20 years, called LONAP. Um, we run a bunch of switches and people connect to it and interconnect over it. They um, exchange traffic and in, that, in fact exchange reachability information using BGP. Okay, you're following me, hopefully. How do we arrange a maintenance on this fabric? Well, we send an email, right? Like, hello, you're going to have an outage on your ports between this time and this time. Um, sorry, but we have to get this done. Ideally, members would shut their BGP sessions and move the traffic elsewhere. I did a maintenance on Tuesday night in, in Telehouse. Um, we moved about uh, 40 LONAT members between some switches. Do you know how many shut their BGP sessions? It's a bit more than zero. It was about four. Now, there is some, some bias here. They, they already know we, we're taking some other steps. But uh, actually, yeah, people cannot collate this amount of information. They can't actually act on it. So, as I said, we need to carry out these works. We don't have any choice. So what actually happens to production traffic when we do a maintenance? Let's have a look. This is a typical internet exchange. We have some switches at the top. It really is just a bunch of switches. And we have two member routers at the bottom. There's a BGP session between them. This is the simplest kind of setup. Um, now, we can see this BGP session. It sits there purring away. And... Uh, then each router knows it can reach each other over the fabric. What happens when we do a maintenance on one of these switches? Splat. Um, so I've just uh, uh, rebooted this one for a code upgrade, say. Um, that's interesting. So we've, we've, uh, well, I've rebooted it. Router A actually knows nothing about what's happened. It's sitting there. It's BGP session, as far as it knows, is still up. Um, it's just sitting there waiting for whole timers. Um, Router B might know about it because its link may go down, but router A certainly does not. So it's sitting there and it's still sending traffic and we're still dropping traffic on the floor. This is not good. Only 30 to 180 seconds later um, do the BGP sessions get ceased by virtue of the hold timer expiring, and then router A will find somewhere else to send its traffic. This is rubbish. This is making a terrible internet. Every time we do this, this traffic just drops on the floor. It's someone sitting there hitting F5 trying to load a web page. It's no good. What we actually have to do is remove the traffic from the internet exchange before we do this, this work. Now, an obvious way would be to log into the router and shut it down, but we're, we're an IXP operator. We don't have access to your routers, and <laughs> that's a good thing. Um, so what we want to do is remove the BGP sessions and then wait for the hold timers or wait for the traffic to go away. And then we can do the maintenance knowing that no packets will be dropped. So, but how do we, how do we, how do we remove or cull someone else's BGP sessions? Well, we can put a layer four access control list on the internet exchange port if our hardware supports it. Let's have a look at what this might look like. This is uh, an example for Arista or Cisco, actually. Um, so uh, we have an access list for V4 and for V6, because V6 is important, just as important as V4, really. Um, we block traffic only to and from our IXP subnets, TCP 179, IE BGP. When we're ready to do the maintenance, we actually apply that to a, to a port on a, um, onto a member port. What this means is you sit there and you uh, wait for the traffic to go away, and then you do the reboot. And hopefully, if you do it right, no packets are dropped. So we tested this first in 2013. It's nearly four years ago now. Um, it's been used at a bunch of other internet exchanges. And the problem is we didn't actually have a word for this. We're like, are you doing that thing where you apply the access list and the blah? And like, oh, do you mean the thing where we put the BGP access list on? It doesn't really, uh, um, it was a bit of a kind of undefined practice among, among us IXPs that are using this. Um, so what we've actually done is we've started to write an RFC for this because 
Um, we feel it should be documented as an internet operational practice. Um, we recognise that I, in an ideal world, internet uh, BGP operators would remove the traffic manually, using, you know, shut their own BGP sessions, but we also have to be pragmatic and realise that they, they don't actually do that, and we should use this, this technique which we're, we're calling BGP session culling. So this is in the uh, Grow ITF working group. Um, so far, the um, reception has been pretty good. Um, it's, it's a relatively simple RFC. Um, we're, we're, um, we've been doing some work um, as a small group with um, mostly uh, Yobshinizers, Matt Griswold, Nick Hilliard, and myself. Um, we've documented this practice. We've got some examples in there. Um, we're really interested in your, in your comments on this, on this practice. So just to sort of summarize on the whole thing, um, I think this, this technique is pretty benign. Um, it's, it's making for a better internet. And uh, when you should maybe ask your internet exchange operators if, if they're using this technique to make their maintenance is more friendly. Thanks very much. Questions? Hi, Dave Freeman from Clarinet. Uh, I, it's not really a question, it's more a, a, a sort of a statement. I'd oh, like you're to one say, of them. I'd like to say thank you. I'd like to say thank you for being brave enough to use at layer three and above ACLs on an internet exchange in the UK. It works. Thank you. It worked on our old extreme platform. It works on our new Arista platform just fine. Um, this is used on the internet exchanges in a dozen countries. It's no problem. I can certainly, I, I feel the benefit of this every single time Lana does some maintenance. So. Well, I took your port down on Tuesday night. <laughs> yes, you night, did. Did you? No, I know. I, I noticed. And I didn't turn down my BGP <laughs> sessions because I knew what you were doing. Um, yeah, just one from Neil. Isn't this just highlighting the whole madness of humans running networks? I mean, honestly, <laughs> uh, the last two presentations, I know a lot of work's going into them, but it just feels like, uh, it feels like I'm in the 90s again and we're writing code, doing code by config by, via email, surely the right answer is to get, is to start building system control of this stuff so that, you know, you don't have to build filters, you press a button, there's a signal to the device that says, by the way, I'm doing some maintenance here, and it just happens. You got, I don't know, thousands, more than a thousand potential peers on an exchange, and trying to do that manually, it's just, it's, it, you know, if, aliens landed and saw us do it, they would leave the planet because they would find no intelligence in that. It just, it just does make so no sense to work around it like this, when what we need is a completely rethink about how we do in, you know, inter-carrier connectivity and the way that we do it. I, I agree. And actually, this is an automated way of doing it. It is a step up from doing nothing, doing nothing. However, Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, what we're doing is at least recognizing the problem yeah. and fixing it. I'm not going to, unfortunately, I cannot re-architect the uh, entire interconnection ecosystem, but what I can do is make it a little bit better. I think it's possibly worth pointing out as well that how many times we've had failed uh, shutdown communication uh, standards going through in reference to Dave's previous presentation. I mean, if there was a wonderful way of automating it, that would be a good way of doing it. So if there's, uh, there's no one else, there's just a couple of uh, presentations. Um, thank you very much, thank Will. You. I appreciate it. Round of applause. Um,